answer. <sighs> yes. Very well, my lord. Oh, my. That was my reaction on my first visit, too. Welcome, Sir Giles. A page will show you to your quarters. Sir Henry of Medford, in the service of King Willem. Welcome, Sir Henry. A page will escort you to your quarters. I am Sir Dylan, in the service of King Alfred of Wyndham. I'm here to attend the gala in honor of Sir Gawain and Sir Bryant of Camelot. Sir Dylan? Oh, let me see. I'm sorry, my lord, but there is no Sir Dylan on the list. There isn't? But I sent you my letter of acceptance by Carrier Pigeon weeks ago. I'm in the right place, am I not? This is Camelot. <laughs> yes, it is. As if a place this magnificent could be anything but. You sure I'm not on any of these lists? I'm afraid not. Well, I'll be on my way then. Wait, allow me to introduce myself. I am Prince Valiant. Perhaps I can... What an honor this is! To meet a prince of Camelot! No, no, no. My father's kingdom is... was in Toulay. It seems you have a problem. Perhaps I can help. Attending this gala means so much to me. Any help you could give me, I would greatly appreciate. He seems to be a pleasant fellow. Yes, I suppose. You hail from Wyndham, you say? Yes, sir. A small shire, far to the north. You've probably never heard of it. Most people have. On the contrary, I've been there many a time. Oh, Sir Bryant, I so wanted to attend this gala. It has been my dream to one day see the inside of Camelot. Now I fear I never shall. Well, I suppose the pigeon carrying your letter could have lost its way. Or perhaps even perished. The passes through these mountains can be very treacherous. Will you then authorize Sir Dylan's entrance into Camelot, Sir Bryant? If you know Wyndham, you know how far I've come to honor you and Sir Gawain, and to celebrate the miracle that is Camelot. Very well. You may see Sir Dylan to the guest quarters, Valiant. Thank you, Sir Bryant. And thank you, Valiant. I shan't forget this. Oh. Well, that, that wasn't very knightly, was it? <laughs> Come, I'll show you to your quarters. I must confess, Sir Dylan, I envy your knighthood. I'm still not used to it myself. I was knighted scarcely a month ago. Valiant, I'm so excited about being invited to this gala. They say it will be a spectacular celebration. I would give anything to attend. But there's so much going on in Camelot today, I'm sure I'll still have a bounty of amusements to enjoy. The amusements will have to wait, Valiant. As soon as you're finished here, you're to report to the stables to clean the carriages in the wagon room and ensure that they're in working order. Arn will do the same with the tack and harnesses. But Merlin, this is a holiday. Not for you, I'm afraid. I don't mean to be impertinent, but is this quite fair? This does not have to do with fairness, Valiant. It has to do with duty. And I expect you to do yours with grace and diligence. But Merlin! <sighs> Heaven, I'll be finished here soon. This is the last of them. <coughs> I just hope this dust doesn't kill me first. How goes it, Valiant? Slowly. So it always goes when one wishes to be elsewhere. Take heart. You shan't be here forever. You'll find this one needs little work. Cleaning, mostly. Still, I expect it will take you several more hours with the rag. See you do your work with care. This carriage means a great deal to King Arthur. It does? From the looks of it, he's not used it in years. True, but to King Arthur, this is far more than just a carriage. 
It's a part of his very heart. I don't understand. Why is this old carriage so dear to his majesty? It was the vehicle which carried him on his first official journey as king. It was many years ago, shortly after his coronation. Arthur and Guinevere traveled to King Philip's court of Ravenswood. It was a difficult journey. The last stretch of the road to Ravenswood is narrow and treacherous. One side, a solid wall of granite. The other, a sheer drop to the sea. The carriage was sturdy and true. It carried King Arthur safely to his first meeting with the monarchs of the surrounding kingdoms, to his first peace conference. And so it falls to King Philip, and King Alfred, and King Willem, to all of us, to make the new order a reality. Let us drink to the ideal that is Camelot. How beautiful you make it seem, the carriage which first carried King Arthur in his dream to the world at large. Aye, so see to it that it shines like the sun. She's still in good condition. Very good, except for this. The studs in the hub need replacing. That shouldn't take long. But look at these spokes, Valiant. They show signs of wear. To make the carriage truly roadworthy, you'll have to remove the wheel and replace the spokes. Still, she'll be magnificent when she's done. Absolutely magnificent. Sir Dillon, I am glad you were able to solve your problem. Welcome to Camelot. Oh, you'll never know how happy I am to be here. Well, I guess I'd best get back to work. Enjoy your stay. I've come to invite you to the gala, Valiant. Each night is being allowed one guest. I'd like you to be mine. Sir Dylan, I told you I'd not forget your kindness. The festivities begin in half an hour. Meet me at the doors of the Great Hall and we shall have ourselves a merry revel. Half an hour? Repairing those spokes will take the best part of the afternoon. I know, Arne. A half hour will give me only time to finish the hub. I would offer my help, but I've still at least a dozen saddles to clean and polish. That's all right, Arne. I'll be fine. Well, if you're sure. There's no reason to spend hours making this carriage roadworthy. All that's needed is to make it appealing to the eye. Besides, if I'm someday to sit at the round table, it's important that I spend time in the company of knights. There's no need to waste effort in making perfect a wheel which will never again see the road. Lords and ladies, esteemed guests, in recognition of their valor during Baron Stephen Jeffrey's siege of Cannonwald, I give you Sir Bryant and Sir Gawain. I can't believe I'm really here. I wonder what it must be like to be so honored. That I can't imagine. And thus far, I've only paid homage. I've not received it. I'm afraid I've consumed a bit too much of this sumptuous feast. Excuse me, Valiant, I think I need some air. It looks as if you're making preparations for a journey. Aye. His Majesty travels to the court of King Philip this afternoon, to the annual meeting at which all the loyal realms will renew their peace treaties with Camelot. I take it this is the vehicle in which King Arthur will travel? <laughs> I'm a friend of Valiant's. He told me all about this carriage. It is the one in which King Arthur journeyed to Ravenswood for the first meeting, is it not? Yes, it is. My lord, what a splendid idea that he should use it again today. Yes, I think King Arthur will like that very much. Arn! Arn? You, there! The old 
royal carriage. Who has taken it? Where is it gone? I said, where has the carriage gone? Who has taken it? His Majesty, he's gone to Ravenswood in it. Is it your horse you're after, sir? Your stable master was quite taken with my suggestion that Arthur travel to Ravenswood in that old carriage. Your suggestion? Come now, can you really be that dim? I've come to Camelot, my friend, not to honor it, but to destroy it. And your willingness to let that wheel go unrepaired provided me with a most convenient way to accomplish that. Where are my manners? I haven't told you who I am. I am Dylan, son of Sinan. You and my father met the day he laid siege to your father's castle. You... You cannot be Sinan's son. I saw him. He was barely more than a child. You saw my baby brother. Now you are seeing me. I'm here to put an end to Camelot and to the New Order, and thus fulfill one of my father's fondest dreams. A dream that will never come true. King Arthur's armies far outnumber Sinan's. Ha, ah, but thanks to your gracious help, there will be no need of armies. Arthur will simply perish on the road to Ravenswood. Good night, sweet prince. Sleep well. Knowing that the fall of Camelot is on your head. <laughs> Only my father had killed you when he had the chance. How goes it, Rolf? It goes well, my young prince. What's needed now is for your father to best sin on himself. With that, his men will flee and our battle will be won. Explain as we ride. So, Dylan, look. <coughs> Valiant! Those blasted friends of his! They freed him! Riding to warn Arthur. <laughs> Doubtless that's their intent. Come.
They'll be along any moment now. A pity you could not have saved that rock slide for them. Perhaps we should arrange another one. Do you think you can do what needs to be done, Rowan? With ease. care of him. But what about Dylan? Where has he gone? I'm not sure, but we've no time to waste on him. We must get to King Arthur. <laughs> to see me, Your Majesty? I owe you my thanks, Valiant. When the day comes for you to achieve knighthood, you have a courage that will serve you well. Thank you, Your Majesty. 
Your Majesty. Tell him, boy. Your Majesty, I... I cannot accept such praise in good faith. I must speak the truth. It was my responsibility to see to your carriage. I wanted to attend the gala, so I made short work of it. I left the spokes of the wheel unrepaired. I see. Your road to knighthood may be a longer one than I had imagined, Valiant. You made assumptions, underestimated the importance of attending to detail. Those are grave errors in judgment. Errors to which no wise leader falls victim. I'm, I'm so sorry. I know. And we'll speak of it no more. Be careful, Valiant. Such mistakes can return to haunt you in most unexpected ways.